Hello and welcome back to Alleyway Conversations. Once again, I'm Andrew. And I'm a three-toed sloth. Also Patrick. And we got a friend. Right. <laughs> and we 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 saw some comments on our YouTube channel. And yeah, nobody nobody really cares about what we have to say, but everyone was really excited about CJ. Right. So back by <laughs> popular demand, because it's the only appeal we have on this show. <laughs> I just woke up from my nap. So, <laughs> so uh, one of the things, um, you know, people, if you ever have suggestions or anything, leave a comment. People actually read them. Oh, yeah. If you're mean, I will hunt you down. Yeah, because, like, aside from the Halloween episodes, we really just, like, more or less pull this out of our ass. Just like, oh, uh, what haven't we done? We can do this, right? Yeah, right. let's do that. But but people really wanted to, to have CJ back, so uh, yeah. say hi, CJ. Hey, I'm here. What's going on? So, um, a lot of people wanted to know, you know, like, where you're from, and if you have a YouTube channel or anything like that. Yeah, my phone number, and yeah. I, I heard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah lots of... A yeah, lot of females want to what? know where you live. Yeah, Probably some of, guys, too. Lots yeah. of flirty comments, I noticed. Yeah. Lucky bastard. Some of us are single. Nobody's ever excited about the creepy bald guy. What the hell? Right. Yeah, I'm excited about you. Oh, nice. So, um, so you were you were telling us earlier that uh, you you have worked on uh, a couple of other YouTube channels in the past. Yeah, I'm always uh, kind of in the background of making people go popular and viral. I've never actually been in the spotlight. So, so this is actually one yeah. of your few times you've actually been on a show and 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 interacted with the wider audience. Yeah, yeah I mean that's happened before. It's just not something I've really maintained. Never so much tried to do. Well, yeah, I mean, performance is hard. It it takes a certain amount of gusto that not everyone can do. Not to mention the fact, with, I mean, you may have a hard time performing, but I have a hell of a time editing. Don't even get me started on Andrew's editing. What's that supposed to mean? Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I'm terrible at social cues! But no, you, you've said that uh, you, you've done a lot of stuff in the past, but you have no desire to be in the limelight either. No, it's just never really crossed my mind one way or the other. I mainly enjoy being in the background and making the videos, really. See, I, I always considered that you, you would make an amazing number two. You'd be like, he's the one who makes all the decisions, and I'm the one that makes it happen. Do, do, do we get the sharks with laser beams on their freaking heads? Also, I wanted some sharks with some freaking laser beams. Yeah. CJ is the guy that gets it done. Sure, number one can say everything, but number two is the one that pulls all the strings to make it happen. Yeah. So, um, if he was in music, he'd probably be a really solid roadie. He might even be a good bassist. Wasn't that kind of your? Isn't that kind of the uh, number yeah. two of a band? <laughs> yeah, it always seems like the bassist is the one who like comes up with all the ideas, all the compositions. But everybody thinks it's the singer, so... Or the lead guitarist. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about the poor drummer? He's just back there just, like, yeah, jerking he, off. He, <laughs> he does cares. nothing, but also nobody expects anything, so... <laughs> but if he was missing, everyone would be really mad at him. Oh my god, especially with me. I played punk, and, like, you gotta have a really solid drum line in punk, so... Oh, yeah. Well, um, CJ has offered to help us in the past. He made our new, uh backdrop that everybody's staring at now where uh, yeah. Patrick's Dale Gribble and I'm... Uh, Bo Bill. Yeah, You're Bill. Bill Dotrieve. I was yeah. thinking Boom Power. Yeah, but... yeah, originally it was just a suggestion like we're kind of shaped like Dale and Bill. But yeah, what you ended up with actually ended up exceeding my expectations. So. Oh, it was it was beautiful yeah. and we loved it. <laughs> and he also says he can help us. Uh, we are wanting to do some video editing as well that way you guys aren't just staring at a static picture and if we can get that done then if we can get a few episodes like I said I, I've learned a lot from listening to Neebs Gaming and that's what they do on YouTube they yeah. have some of their past episodes on there so you can look at stuff and it's that, I mean yeah, yeah we, we brought CJ along because of his sexy voice but man to rally us ooh ooh yeah and uh yeah I mean, it's it's sad what happened to Thick Forty Four, and I mean those guys were together for years, and 
I kind of feel bad about it because really I've only I'm I'm kind of new to Neebs as a whole, uh, so I didn't know a whole lot about Thick Forty Four, and uh, yeah, so this just so happened around the time where I was I wouldn't necessarily say discovering but getting really into Neebs, so I kind of feel like I just I really shouldn't mourn and just let other people. You cope you in came their own in way. late. As everything was going down. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I watch uh, Neeps Gaming for like a long time, and I always thought that Thick Forty Four was like the least popular one out of them. But I still loved him. Right. And they they had a great dynamic. All five yeah, of them. Yeah, I loved him. I just thought he was the least popular one. And then now it's like it's sad they've gone. I would I would have to because yeah. it seems like everybody had a had a thing. I mean. Neebs was uh, kind of like, I don't know, Chaos Incarnate, I guess you could yeah, call him. Neebs is just... Yeah. Absro was the angry, yelly one. <laughs> uh, Simon played the bumbling fool. Yeah. Uh, Duralius, even though I know he's not black, in every animation, did clip and game I've seen him in, he tries to be black. Yeah. He's the black one! Did, Wait, uh, aren't you white? Shut up. Did you already do the episode where we talked about the movie he was in? Not yet. That's actually in backlog, and we will get to it here very soon. But okay. everyone wanted to hear CJ, so I wanted to get this one out first. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, I'll I'll talk about that uh, in yeah. that episode. But it was it was a it was a good one. He he was in Suicide for Beginners. I mean, every single one of them has had experience yeah. in the film industry. So I, um, I mean, it just seemed. I mean, and they all do their own editing. They do have additional editors to help, but... I kind of wonder if Neebs has ever been, like, actually on screen. I'm, like, morbidly curious as to what the guy looks like. Uh, He's probably just an average-looking guy, but... Honestly, no. I've actually seen uh, some of their uh, appearances at Comic-Cons. Neebs is, like, 6'5", almost as thin as a rail, and beefy. (laughs) I mean, he works out a lot. I mean, all of them do. But, you know, like you were saying, if you're going to be sitting in front of a computer eight, ten hours a day editing and making videos, you kind of got to get up and move or else you're going to turn into, well, me. I I tried doing a little bit of photo editing. Uh, That lasted about a week just because I had to, like, get up and wander around and, like, just kind of not look at a computer screen. Right, and that's that's why I upgraded my computer screen. I got the high def because it seems to hurt my eyes less, and I got the curved screen because it looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, but but yeah, uh, CJ even offered to help us uh, with some of the video editing and all sorts of stuff because you know he's done this before, and I'm the little bumbling. Ki- I'm Ralph Wiggum in the corner eating glue. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, then plus it's like. I, I I feel like I got naggy, like, have you edited anything yet in the past, like, ever? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I won't lie, it does get a bit tedious, yeah. and... I oh, mean, yeah. You it get is. locked in the room, and I... Yeah. The problem is it, it gets to be where it feels like, oh, man, why I'm doing all of this, nobody seems to care, just, nobody wants it, and we have, like, four or five episodes on back it order... That I enjoy listening to, but yeah. I'm putting in all this effort for my mom and your friend. Wait, no, it's your that. friend and my mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Levi, who's been on the show at least twice, and yeah. now CJ. Yeah, yeah. one more good. time, and you win a free sandwich. Ooh, I'm gonna get that sandwich. In. Oh yeah, yeah. How many people Ooh. did you grow by, actually? Did I what? How many people did you grow by? How many people did uh, started watching? Oh yeah. Um, um, like, if, I mean, when we, our first couple episodes had like three or four views, and I think yeah. that was just me and Patrick. Yeah, and like, I, I, I make the joke a lot, but it really was just Levi and my mom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I told my mom to watch us, and uh, she's got the same old person problem of, where are you? What's YouTube? How do I listen to you? And when I finally got her to listen to one, oh my god, you're so loud, and Patrick's so quiet. I'm working on it. I'm learning the editing yeah. software, and now I can equalize voices. Now everyone is the same uh, for both loud and quiet. No, nope. so, <laughs> yeah, I, I actually, I actually remember somebody that I 
Mostly, I think I like met them online. I definitely haven't hung out with them much. Uh, but I like posted a link, and they were like, "Damn, you sound sexy." Uh-oh. Now, now we got CJ, so it's Woo! even sexier. Right. I mean, and I mean, how am I supposed to compare? You guys have some <laughs> nice deep voices, and I'm over here like a goddamn chipmunk. Yeah, but you're way louder than us, so and that's not a good thing. <laughs> and sometimes funnier. Yeah, it makes comedy pretty good, though. Right. Yeah. It's like Laurel and Hardy over here. Yeah. Um, I will say uh, we did get a nice little ego boost uh, yesterday. We oh, were, yeah. So <laughs> the we, old lady. Oh, it was so wonderful. So, like, we just we just hadn't done this in a couple of weeks. So we were getting yeah. a little down. And uh, this little old lady came up to us yeah. while we're standing in the in the beer aisle trying to figure out what to get. And yeah, because, like... I, I'm not going to weigh in on this one way or another, but with all the controversy with Bud Light, a lot of people aren't buying them. They're Instead, the they're buying my Miller Light that I like. So, <laughs> so yeah, he's he's sitting there stomping up and down the aisle. And Where's all my Miller Light? Dang, I'm redneck. Yeah, they yeah. Buy their just, Bud Light. We're just my beer. yeah. I'm just sitting here ranting, and you're just adding to it. And like this little old lady comes up, just dying laughing. <laughs> and she and she was like, you know, I was having a terrible day. I was depressed. She had just moved to Missouri about a little over a year ago. Yeah, and she, she said something about Eureka, California, I think. Yeah, and she was, you know, she left all of her friends and family and everything behind. And she's like, oh, listening to you two talk. And it's not like we were trying to be funny. This is no, like that's, this is just an average conversation yeah, for that's, us. That's why we did the podcast in the first place, just because. We just naturally come up with stuff and people laugh at us, and I don't know why. Right. And we're not funny. <laughs> well, we didn't think we were, but apparently everyone else does. Or they're laughing at us. Eh, I'll take I don't know if I like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll like end up going to a con, and it's like, hey, I got a question for the fat guy. Um, it's Andrew. No, it's the fat guy. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Can you at least call me Ogre? No, no, ogres are kind of strong and don't and have more than just fat. Plus, they smell better. Oh, screw you! <laughs> I don't smell that bad. I take a daily shower. Yeah. Thank you. That was uh, he has mastered it, but that's how he got the nickname. Because when he was in high school, he didn't quite understand hygiene. And uh, does any thirteen-year-old boy? We oh, still, yeah. oh yeah, we're like working. With the uh, with people that sometimes I swear don't forget how to well, do that. To be fair, we work with a lot of younger kids too. Yeah, of course. Uh, my mom was one of those. I'm glad I learned how to take a shower before I went to, to job corps because we had one oh of those kids God. there. Yeah, he was 17. He was like five five and like 400 pounds. We called him oh. Saddlebags. My God, it sounds like he was bigger around than he was tall. N- you're not <laughs> far off. He, w- he was just an orb. Yes. So he would not take a shower, and a r- oh. a- finally they put all the stinky people in one room so they could kind of contain it. <laughs> yeah. But Saddlebags, he stunk so quarantine. bad. Yeah. <laughs> he stank so bad that the entire wing of our dorm. That's over 50 people oh, got together, threw him in the shower, <laughs> and then just started opening up bottles of shampoo and body wash <laughs> and just <laughs> dumping it down. Like, and just leaves. Him down. They didn't even take his clothes off, which, to be fair, I wouldn't want to see that naked running anywhere. Yeah. But they just started pouring soap and stuff on him. And then he waddles out, dripping everywhere, up to the front desk to the teacher. He's like, look at what they did. And the teacher looks at him and goes, well, maybe if you learned how to take a shower, they wouldn't have to do it. Yeah. Just no fucks given. <laughs> like to think he's just like reading a newspaper or something and doesn't even look up. Just, well, maybe you should, maybe you should try to keep yourself well maintained. Right. There was, there was three or four of them. And honestly, if they just stunk, it probably wouldn't have been as big of a deal. But in Job Corps, your room gets graded every day while you're in class. So if the floors aren't swept, if the beds aren't made, if the lockers aren't dusted, if it smells, and you get a low enough score, they'll take your TV, then they'll take your microwave, then they'll take your refrigerator, and then you'll have nothing. So we were 
when they kept trying to put some of the stinky people in our room, we're like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. our shit's <laughs> clean, our shit smells good. Yeah. Put them in the nasty room in the other hallway. Yeah, that is, uh, that is one of the better parts of Job Corps. I know it was probably a huge pain for you. But, I don't know, it kind of teaches some really good life skills. It's yeah, Like, uh, like if you're ever in Harlem, don't piss off the black people. Oh They'll God. kick your ass. Yeah, I, I pass through as, like, windows up, no eye contact with anyone. Or Chicago. Uh, I never went to Chicago. I always, no. <laughs> we had a couple of people there. Uh, I had a couple of people from Chicago I ended up being friends with. I even had one from uh, Philadelphia. Oh, right? You know what nice. his nickname was? Philly? Yes. Nice. Yes, it was. Got it in one. <laughs> but no, this, I mean, I, I do enjoy all of our rambling talks, but I swear we actually had a topic we were going to do today. Uh, yeah, totally. We were going to do scars because everyone enjoys CJ. We figured uh, we'd let him talk about a few because oh, we've yeah, worked I mean, with CJ for a few months and uh, well, he's got some stories to tell. Well, and I mean, it uh, It always feels like we are just, like, hanging out at a bar chatting, and while it doesn't really happen with us, because we already know each other's life stories, um, it definitely is a common topic. you just, like, checking out a guy, like, yo, what's up with uh, that shit on your arm? Oh, man, back in 84. <laughs> like, it becomes a story. You still a sperm in 84. <laughs> yeah, no, I, well, I was meaning, like, other people, but... Yeah. Oh, or like my favorite story of yours of all time? Yo, dude, that's a cool jean jacket. Where'd you get it? Uh, the 90s. <laughs> yeah. So, alright, so, this is basically an episode we're gonna, we're yeah. gonna split it around, and also, I know it, it kind of hurts you to talk a little bit, because it does, is it really like, um, kind of like if you have like laryngitis and try to talk, is it something kind of like that? Yeah, I don't even know what that is, but, um... I, when I was about yeah, when I was about seven. Um, I was I can't, I think I was messed with something sharp. I don't remember what happened, but somehow I tore my stomach open, and I was puking up blood for a week, and um, my stomach eventually healed. I couldn't take no medicine for it. I just had to wait it out, yeah. and when it healed, I kept puking blood, even hmm. though the tear was gone in my stomach. Your, yeah. your stomach was just having none of yeah. this. Yeah, it was, it, I just kept peeking yeah. blood in my and for, for no reason after that. And uh, I went to the doctor, and I was diagnosed with something called GERD, where I'll puke blood, and it's like a really bad acid reflex. Hmm. Yeah. Actually, yeah. uh... Can you imagine doing that when you're seven? Oh. That happened to me when I was 25. Oh. I had terrible acid reflex for like two days. And I was like crawling around in bed. Mommy, make it stop. I actually remember like I was dating a girl and she was starting to get kind of sick. And, you know, of course we're, you know, this was back in Jersey. So obviously we didn't have any money. So we're like, okay, you know what, we'll just see if this passes. And then one night, I get woken up to her having a terrible coughing fit, and she actually coughs blood, like, on my chest. I'm like, okay, well, no, uh, price be damned, you are dying. Let's go do something about quick, this. Quick, to the, to the medieval doctor, you're <laughs> dying of consumption. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, it turns out it was like strep throat, but... Even that was... I un didn't know strep throat could get that bad. If it's untreated for long enough, yes. I Ooh. guess it will. I uh, mean, I've had... Uh, so if we're going through lung problems, I mean, I've had asthma since I was a, a very small child. Well, my point was just simply that alone was enough to be like, Whoa, hey, we should do something about this. <laughs> we should do something about this. Uh, yes, we should. <laughs> now, I, I know we joke at work a lot about uh, you being Russian, but you're not actually Russian, right? Uh, I am, actually, yeah. yeah. Oh, because I could have swore somebody at work was like, you keep calling him Russian, he's actually Ukrainian. Okay. Uh, there's a big distinction nowadays, but... <laughs> I don't know if there was that just, big of one then? Just because of the conflict that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, not, not Ukrainian, I actually am Russian. Okay. Were you were you still living in Russia when all this happened? Oh, 
No, I left about when I was five. Okay. Man. Yeah, because yeah, that, that whole, like, conflict with Ukraine only started happening, like, what, last year? Yeah, about a year and a half ago, yeah. I think. Yeah. Something like that. I know it was ooh. very recent. I mean, this this happened, you're, you're what, 18 now? Yeah. And, and that's the other thing. You're only 18 and you have this voice. Yeah. <laughs> we... We, we sound like squeaky toys compared to you, and uh, we're at least a decade older than you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, there's like, a possibility it won't stop getting lower, and uh, I, could, I could eventually not be able to speak. But until then, I need you to go and try to be a voice actor. <laughs> everyone, everyone wants me to do that, yeah. All right. Now say, English. now say, come to the dark side. It's a very iconic voice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> kind of has Keith David vibes. Right. And this is another thing I learned today. CJ has never seen or played or read anything Star Wars related. Ever. I mean, uh, it's becoming more and more common among younger people nowadays. Uh, like you remember. Uh, you remember the girl we uh, we bought those records off of the other day? Yes. Yeah, she's never seen it either. What so. is wrong with people? I mean, I understand not watching the newer ones. And if you're Harrison Ford, I understand wanting to forget this ever happened. Yeah, I, I think I said it best when I said nobody hates Harrison Ford movies more than Harrison Ford. Right. <laughs> Harrison Ford might have hated his roles, but at least he kept coming back to do them, even, you know, a few years ago with the uh, yeah. newer Star Wars series. The guy who played Obi-Wan in the original movies... Uh, Alex McGinnis. Oh, absolutely hated. Even when he agreed to do the movie, he's like, no, nah, these movies are stupid and nothing yeah. will ever come of them. It kind of reminds me of, like, Michael Caine. Very prominent classical actor. He's been doing a lot of things uh, recently. Uh, which is a constant surprise to me, just because they're like kind of mainstream, kind of, kind of fun. And Michael Caine does not seem like the fun type of guy. True. But uh, a big one for me is that he was also in Jaws 3D, which the very first movie was an iconic classic, and then you can ignore all the other ones; they're not important. <laughs> right. The um, Revenge of Jaws. But yeah. Uh, 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 when asked about it, like, the interviewer was basically like, did you even watch Jaws 3D? And he responded with, well, I watched the house it bought me. <laughs> <laughs> now, the guy you're talking about, he's the main character in Jaws, right? Uh, no. Because I don't think I've seen Jaws 3D. Yeah. Was that, the, was that technically Jaws 2? No, I think it was the third one. Because I remember... Uh, the cause, third or fourth. It was, like, way out there. So, because I, rem- I do remember four Jaws movies. The original Jaws, which uh, had had Qui- uh, Quinn... Mm-hmm. Oh, man. When he died, that, that was terrible. He made yeah. an amazing grizzled semen. It, it really just never got better after that. Right. God, um, no. I want to <laughs> say the second one took place in the aquarium. Yeah. The third one was the one where Jason Brody's son... Uh, was way out, uh, got on like an inner tube, and he had a bunch of friends, and they were on like a party barge thing. I think that was it, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> and then the revenge of Jaws is after Jason Brody dies, and it's his wife that's actually the main character. Yeah. Because, because, oh, I forgot about that, yeah. Jaws actually ate the youngest Brody child. Huh. The one that we see that kind of reminds me of the oceanographer from the first movie, he actually looks a lot like him. Has the same, like, curly beard and stuff. Oh, yeah. And uh, he's he's in that one. He's he's the oldest child. That is, that is amazing how they do that. Like, I... Okay, I think it was, like, last year. I ended up watching the new Ghostbusters movie. I'm sorry. The very new one. Okay, that's better. Which yeah, actually St- is Hey, it really, still has really Bill good. Murray in it. It's good. Yeah, oh, it's got the whole Ghostbusters cast actually playing Even the, the dead one, he got. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's the whole thing. It kind of circles around uh, two of Egon's grandchildren. Wait, and they were both his grandchildren? Yeah. Oh, I thought one was his... I thought the, the, the daughter was his granddaughter, and the other one was just... 
like her friend or something. I didn't know Yeah, that. no. Uh, I haven't seen the movie yet. Yeah, I Finn Wolfhard is supposed to be Egon's grandson. And uh, it was... Uh, well, Finn Wolfhard is amazing. I love him. I hope he grows up and does amazing things. He's kind of grown up already. Hey, he did... Uh, uh, he was uh, the... He was one of the stars in Danny, Don't You Know, from the NSP music video. Correct. That was actually something he did. Well, I don't know if he... I, I hope he got credited for it, because he did wonderful at it, but uh, that was actually something... He's a huge Game Grumps fan, and he loves NSP, and that's... That's, that's awesome. Yeah, he did a guest spot, and I guess that was it was through that he's like... Danny Sexbang was just like, you know, you kind of look like a younger me. <laughs> <laughs> but a and lot kinda. less successful. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, he made a song about dinosaurs and lasers. He just yeah. made Stranger Things, nerd. And D&D, &D, nerd! Yeah. Where's... Oh, man, I can't remember. Who was that guy that would yell that in uh, Revenge of the Nerds? I can't remember his name now. Yeah, it was something like really 80s bully sounding. But it was a really good movie. It was like movie. Biff or whatever. Right. It was a good movie. You should watch it. As long as you don't mind um, um, some slight rape in the end of the movie. Yeah, I I feel like there was something about racism. Like, it has not aged well. Well, it uh, was from the 80s. Did yeah. anything from the 80s age well? Look at uh, their hair. I swear they used they used to have to use two cans uh, of hairspray a day. Bill and Ted is still amazing. Well, that's only because of Keanu Reeves, and Keanu Reeves is an immortal vampire <laughs> that I will offer me that I will offer body and soul to. Well, he was also in uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, where he was the only one in Victorian England with a California accent. You no, know, you, you know who else I would <laughs> pledge body and soul to because uh, it's a plug-in. Jason Momoa, Tim Curry. Oh yeah, we gotta have our Tim Curry plug-in, yeah, man. One of these days, I am hoping Tim Curry will hear this and like, you know what? I'm gonna give these weirdos a call yeah. and either say, even if he just called me, he's like, "Hey, that was kind of cool. Thanks." <laughs> I would blow my mind. Or, oh my god, oh I'm my god, I have, we there. have restraining orders from Tim Curry. <laughs> Here's yeah. the signature. I'm getting this framed. Yeah, like get like mounted. Yep. Just he had to sign place that him on himself. around the wall. <laughs> It's it was made from awesome. his real ink that he had from his pen, from his hand. Oh, yeah. I wonder if he breathed on it. So, just, I, I really like just all this stuff. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> Back to CJ. All of this stuff <laughs> is great. So, yes. if, if there's one thing I know me and Patrick kind of railroad anyone... Yeah. That we're just not used to. Levi knows this. That's why when Levi's on here, he he doesn't stick to anything. He's just like, you know what? No. I'm gonna butt in. He, so he sometimes like actually like railroads us back. Right. Like, he's which, like, which you're going to need to do. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. When we hear the rumble of the thunder, we'll quiet down. Yeah. Like the wildebeests on the Serengeti. Is that you, Mufasa? Uh, the, thing, the thing with GERD, though, is it doesn't actually make your voice deep. It, it's like a really bad acid reflex to where you puke up blood. Yeah. I, mine had a complication with it that wasn't supposed to happen. Well, so. we, we, we enjoy your voice. <laughs> to think, yeah. we get to work with that all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's it kind of like it almost got stuck in my throat. And it, it started pulling and tearing uh, my vocal cords Ugh. until I couldn't speak for uh, about a month, really. Mm. It's why you're more of a behind-the-scenes kind of guy, so you don't have to talk in front of a mic for hours yeah. on end. Yeah. All right, now sing Chocolate Rain. <laughs> and from from there, this is just how it healed, I guess. It's just one big scar, and it's just how it. This is just how it healed. I don't think it's getting any better. Yeah. Well, did did are you? Are you still having stomach troubles with that, or is that healed uh, yeah, too, finally? Uh, I do still pick up blood. It's just not very often, not very much. It's like acid reflux. It's just something you do now. Yeah, it's just yeah. there. I, I remember I actually had, like, a stomach bug where I just randomly threw up, and it was just like, this is, this is my life now. This is how it's going to be forever. 
But for you, it actually is, and yeah. it's much more. Again, it's much more concerning when there's blood involved. Right. Like, I, I'm. I'm just saying, uh, blood's supposed to stay inside. And I don't care which end the blood comes out of, it's disturbing either way. Yeah, yeah. Any, any amount of, like, blood coming out other than, like, a scrape is like, oh, okay, we should do something about that. Right. As far as uh, speaking goes, it used to hurt really bad. But it's got to the point where it just, it does still hurt. It just feels like you're poking a bruise. Yeah. It's not really that bad. You're, you're used to it now yeah. at this point. It's just there, it's fun. So I've yeah. got I've got kinda another like, one for kind of like your back. Yeah. Well, I was talking to Andrew about his back, but yeah, we <laughs> all we all spend like hours on end bent over uh, brick walls. So right. Well, like sure I was uh, telling one of the right well, it was like I was telling one of the guys uh, that that I work with. Um, he has some hip and knee pain. And he's like, I think my back's going to start hurting, too. And I'm like, oh, man, oh don't. God. I don't want to deal with that. I, I remember back in high school, I, I pinched a nerve in my back helping someone move. And from when I was about 15 to about 21, about, I don't know, every month, every other month, I would just wake up one day. I don't know if I slept wrong. I don't know what was going on. That nerve would just be pinched, and for the rest of the day, I was done. I just, I couldn't move. I, oh, it felt like a lumberjack with an with an icy axe mistook my spine for a tree. And yeah. Oh man. But luckily, when, once I got to job corps, I started working out. I started eating yeah. better. I dropped like 50, 60 pounds, and I haven't had that problem since. Yeah. Well, I would. You know, that's that's actually kind of similar. Do you remember, like, when I was in high school, when we were in high school? How bad my knees were? Yeah, I used to remember you used. I used to call you. Uh, what was it? Snap, crackle, and pop. Yeah, because like any time I'd squat down, I'd either have to be like helped up by someone or my cousin. In you know, just because he's such a nice guy, would just <laughs> yeah. push me down so I could kneel <laughs> and yeah, then his, get up that co- way. His cousin was kind of an asshat back in high school. <laughs> yeah, I I haven't talked to him in years. I hope he's doing all right, and I hope he's I hope he's living life the best he can. But man, back when we were like fifteen or sixteen, that guy was an asshole, <laughs> dick. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, so that was that was kind of my life. I had really bad knee pain that never went away, and uh, after a while, uh, I think I think weights training really helped. But really, just exercise in general. Like I'm going out, I'm walking around because when you get when you get paid to do so, you're willing to actually get up and do stuff. Well, it also you were you were te- helping uh, teach how to box. And when you live in a van and can't afford, uh, uh, you know, to move the van, yeah. you walk a lot of places. There, there actually were times where, like, we just didn't have, we did not have enough money to put gas in the tank to, like, go down the road. And it's like, okay, well, I guess we live here now. <laughs> In a van <laughs> down by the river. Actually, living by the river was great in the summertime, just because it's a little bit cooler. Uh, you can do a little bit of fishing. Uh, you could start a fire. Could you swim, or is it one of those like really nasty rivers? You don't really. Oh, this was it. Jersey. There was nothing you'd want to swim in, man. Uh, good point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wait, this is Jersey. Was the air even worth breathing? I have my doubts, but I'm a heavy smoker, so I didn't really mind that much. Well, and, and, and that's the thing you were telling me. If New Yorkers, screw New Jersey. New York is awesome. Why? It, um, it's New York. Yeah, they, they're they incredibly th- provincial. Uh, they absolutely love, there is a song written about every square inch of New York somewhere. I as swear. long as it's below 100th hundred, hundred Street. Oh, no, no. They even have stuff uh, about, like, Harlem and Queens and stuff. Like, you're glorifying Queens. What the hell is your problem? What? It's not Hell's Kitchen. Isn't that good enough? There's a song about... Uh, there's probably a song glorifying Hell's Kitchen, too. Uh, it does. Is it sung by Daredevil? <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, Ben Affleck had a short-lived music career. Uh, I, I, for, I forgot he played Daredevil back when we were in school. I, I actually liked I that I did movie. not just because Colin Farrell was Bullseye. God, he was having so much fun in that. Right. Like, he was easily the best part of the movie. Oh, man. Uh, but, yeah, like, I mean, like, there's so much... My point is, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of New Yorkers who absolutely and totally love New York and will not hear anything about anything negative when it comes to New York. But they'll shit all over New Jersey. Yeah, they absolutely despise New Jersey. Even though there's no good yeah. reason to. Yeah, there was, uh, there was this one spot we were parked at where I was probably... I was sitting on the New Jersey border... Looking over the river, and I, I thought to myself, I could probably stand here in New Jersey and piss on New York. <laughs> but I really, really wanted to. Yes. <laughs> hey, it, it could be worse. Remember what you used to pee on back when we used to walk around in high school? Yeah, yeah, lots of churches, because I was an edgy teenager and hated organized religion. How do you feel now, Mr. Jew? Yeah, well... <laughs> well, I never peed on synagogues. Yeah, yeah I don't I know did. why that's I, a Jewish accent I went with. Uh, but yeah, you, that's you a can terrible. do a mulligan. I'll allow it if you want. Fenoigel, why don't you piss on my church? Okay, that wasn't any better. That kind of drifted into like some form of Eastern European. Hush. Yeah. Okay, okay, CJ, speak Russian. <laughs> speak Russian. Dosvidanya. Uh, there you go. Kaputos. I think he swore at me. No, it just sounds scary because it's in Russian. You're right. You mean just like how everything in German is going to die? Why yeah. are you yelling it at us? What do you mean? I just speak normal. Yeah, did I tell you about Red? I, I had to have mentioned him on yeah, the podcast. You yeah, you told me about Red. Yeah, he Russian was... Uh, he was this ginormous Russian guy that I trained how to fight. And, yeah, he was awesome in every way. But, yeah, he'd, like, be on the phone with his mom, and it would sound like there were death threats. <laughs> yeah. Like, people were getting yeah. mutilated at once they met. And I'd just kind of, like, walk in. I'm like, yeah, Red, <laughs> you, you good, bro? Yeah, I need to do, uh, I need to take out the trash when I get home. She like, said she would bring brownies <laughs> for everyone. Yeah, it would be like a normal conversation, but it would sound so terrifying. <laughs> like, That's I don't know if I'm more worried for Red or his mom, but somebody is going to get hurt. I am thinking out of the trash. Okay, it's it's Red's mom. Red's mom is, was terrifying. Is, <laughs> is taking out the trash a Russian version of uh, concrete shoes or something? No, no, you just, you know, it would be like a normal conversation. Uh, take out the trash, you just kind of throw it out the window in the streets. That's basically what that was. Well, yeah, wow. but I mean, they were in Jersey, so you throw it out in the street. That's right. Yeah. And then you pee out the window and hope you hit a passerby. <laughs> hope you hit someone traveling to New York. Hey, look, he's bald. Go for that one. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I'm from Missouri, jackass. Oh, sorry. Hey, that's probably the only reason you didn't get shot. Uh, that very well could be. I remember that was the whole thing, like, I, I mentioned it on the podcast, that that one morning I, like, ran into a guy in a suit. Yeah. Yeah. He ended up being a mobster, and he's like, Well, hey. I don't know if he's a mobster or not. You said that so unconvincingly. That if he's not a mobster, he has spontaneously turned into one. <laughs> he's just walking down the road. All right, I need to go to the plant. And then I need to... I am... Just giant pillar of uh, of dark suits and, <laughs> and floppy hat or something. All right. People... And now he's sitting there flipping a coin. I don't know why People he's can... an old 1940s mobster. <laughs> yeah, you uh, haven't met many mobsters in the last hundred years, have you? <laughs> hey, Bugs Bunny taught me a lot. Now, where is his Tommy gun? <laughs> Very shiny shoes. <laughs> how come that no? Uh, how come that ever went out of style? I don't know. I thought they looked really good. Remember the Godfather video game? 
Yeah. You, got, you got to dress in just the, the yeah. not a zoot suit. Um, uh, the, like, pinstripe suit oh, always God. went with double-breasted because oh, made God, me it feel was, like a badass. I know, right? It was amazing. I yeah. loved it. It looked so cool. Yeah, God. I'll join a mobster and get garroted just so I can be fly. Oh, yeah. We, we will... We would last about uh, five minutes in the American Mafia. I I could see that. Hey, hey, hey. And I'm we okay would last, that. and I would personally last uh, maybe about two minutes in the Irish Mafia. Boy, you actually are Irish. The Irish Mafia is really tough, though. <laughs> are they tougher than the IRA? Mm, they've actually accomplished what they said. <laughs> We didn't need bombs and thousands of people shooting to get what we needed. <laughs> yeah. You know, how, uh, you know how many uh, of our countrymen died to get what we want? Okay, this is getting kind of controversial. I've never been to Ireland. I don't know the whole situation. I'm going to shut up. And I'm Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw That's that That's even out there. more controversial. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I'm Lord Andrew. <laughs> Uh, Levi bought me a oh, yeah. uh, that's, got... that two square feet yeah, in, so in Scotland and put planted a yeah, tree in it. You're legally a lord now. So I actually did some digging into that, and that's not really how that works, but that's, yeah, that's a topic you... for something else. I'm going to call you a lord anyway. Yes, I am Lord Andrew. What are you lord of? Uh, um, two inches somewhere in Bermuda. Two feet. Feet, and it's actually oh. in Scotland. Oh, oh, okay. If it was outside of Scotland, how would you be a lord of Scotland? Be a lord, lord. of Bermuda. Oh. I lord over the triangle. That's not... There's there's more to Bermuda than that weird-ass triangle, man. It's the only thing that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me something else about Bermuda. Right off the top of your head, other than the triangle. They make shorts that are oh. kind of long. Okay, I'll give you that. <laughs> so they have uh, they, they have triangles that people have been dissing it, disappearing into for hundreds of years, and shorts. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Yeah. Good on you, Bermuda. Uh, there's a grass, although that might be a slang term for weed. I don't know. Well, look at bluegrass. That's not blue. No, it's kind of it's bluish. It's bluer than any grass I've seen. Well, all the grass I've seen tends to be you know green. Yeah, but that's bluish green. <laughs> the Nigel. Again, that's I don't think that's a real Hebrew word. Now that I'm saying it on the internet, that I'll be corrected. I swear. Yes, please, Jewish people, tell us more of your words. I need to insult yeah. Patrick more because it's hilarious. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if we should do Jewish mom jokes. Uh, no. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, when I was, when I was in New Jersey, for those who don't know, uh, which would be the internet, because you guys already know, uh, I was dating a Jewish girl, she was very wonderful, and her parents were very, very nice, but her mom had a voice that would just grate on you, and she would be... She is the quintessential Jewish mom. Yeah, and... You know, your cousin Jeffrey never had a problem with the police. Yeah, and... <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure your cousin would have married a nice Jewish boy. I'm just saying. Uh, but yeah, anytime I started, like, imitating her, it'd make my girlfriend laugh, so Did, I... Didn't you say her dad laughed, too, until, his, <laughs> until her mom would glare at him? Oh, yeah, yeah, every now and then, like, I'd be, I, I, because I'd, like, oh my god, this is gold, I have to try it, and, like, she'd just glare at me, and, like, you could kind of see her dad kind of chuckle a little bit. But that, that's the thing about old Jewish couples, the mom never shuts up, which is why the dad never talks. Yeah. So be like, hey, George, uh, what's going on with the plan? Well, well, you see... How yeah. do you know what he does in his work? Oh, he tells me everything. I bet. Are, are you sure? You sure he has a chance to tell you anything? Yeah, like, uh, I think the most conversation I ever got out of the guy uh, was when I decided to actually go to Hebrew school and study Judaism. He, like, actually handed me, like, a glass and filled it with whiskey, and he said... 
I think you're doing a right thing. And that was all I... <laughs> that was the whole conversation. So seven words is the longest conversation you ever had with this man. Yeah, he, he seemed nice. He wasn't like a jerk or anything. He just wasn't a big talker. Man. You know, I kind of wish I was like that, because... We've got a we've got a guy Ethan that we work with never says anything at work unless yeah. he's like directly asked a question. I swear he's the smartest person there. Oh yeah, because he never says anything. Yeah, nobody. I, I'm sorry if you're going to pull a prank on anybody at work. Ethan just starts to blend into the background. Nobody sees him. Nobody thinks about him until something goes. Until we need him for something, they're like, oh yeah, well, Ethan works here. Well, and like. Literally any time uh, I have any problem with my stuff, because he's the guy that trained me how to do what I'm doing now. And he's half your age. <laughs> Let's not, dude. <laughs> uh, but yeah, any time I'm having a problem, like I can write by Rick, see what he thinks, but I notice most of the time, like Rick will just be like, "Well, we gotta find some way to figure uh, get this figured out," and I'm. Rick is the name of our foreman, by the way. Uh, but yeah, he'll be like, well, we definitely need to fix that, but I don't really know how. Go talk to Ethan. Yeah, we'll talk to Ethan. Ethan knows. I don't know how he knows, but he knows. He is he is one with the universe. Yeah, uh, I was actually having a conversation with our roommate. Uh, like, I'm not getting out the numbers like I should, and Chances like, dude, you are the fastest dude doing this that we have. And I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm pretty sure Ethan's a lot faster than I am. And he's like, yeah, but that's because Ethan's a machine. <laughs> he is the machine. <laughs> yeah. Just not oh, Back on to Russia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Have you ever gone back to Russia, by the way? No, no, I've been gone for ever since I left. Yeah, okay, I, I, didn't, I didn't know if you ever happened to leave, and I know you were talking about your girlfriend. Uh, where's she from? Russia. <laughs> so, so what did you do? You're like, oh, Russia. I log on to Russian <laughs> Facebook, find new friends. All right, now I made new friends. You need to come here. Russia back. Uh, <laughs> the thing is, we actually never knew that each other was Russian until after we got together. You didn't even know she was from... Her. No. Oh, no. that's beautiful. I love Just that. Not, you totally totally missed an opportunity to write a love letter in Cyrillic, man. I don't know how aggressive it would be, but, you know. I love you like gun loves bullet. <laughs> I love you like Mikhail Kalashnikov ki uh, loves killing communists. I love you like uh, Russians love vodka. Okay, we can only do that for so long before it just becomes, like, blackface or something. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. We're, we're kind of in a pseudo-war with Russia. Making fun of them's fine right now. As long as they don't nuke us. Ah, you know what? It's not about PR. It's about respect. I don't want to mess with Russia anymore. Well, I considering some of the Russian dash cam footage I've seen, <laughs> I wouldn't want to either. Yeah. Ooh, Russians love? Hmm. The Russians really love the Irish. Nice! Is that because uh, they did everything with potatoes other than make vodka? <laughs> Damn it, Patrick! How how did the Irish love potatoes so much but couldn't figure out how to make vodka out of it? We eat the potatoes, we harvest the barley and stuff and make whiskey. That way we don't uh, we don't lose any food. Russia has plans to make vodka, but we have no potatoes. We get train loads of potatoes from Ireland. And let's face it, if uh, if Russia were to ever run out of vodka, I feel like it would be just as bad if Ireland ever ran out of whiskey. I, I, there might be Armageddon. I actually talked to a friend who visited Moscow. Uh, it was some kind of business trip. Uh, there were two things he said that have stuck with me over the past, like, 12 years. Mm. One of which... Russians are the most hilariously terrifying people on the planet. <laughs> nice. Uh, which, anytime I like see anything to do with Russia on like YouTube or anything, I'm like, yep, I can see it. Because mm -hmm. um, it is funny, but you're also like, dude, if that happened in real life, I would shit myself. Well, but, 
And another one, he said, uh, Russia itself is an entire country in desperate need of parental supervision. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Still, to this day, the, the greatest Russian dash cam footage I ever saw. This, this guy just, uh, he's like on the interstate or something, turns a corner... And then there's a giant fuel tanker oh, in yeah, the middle of the road on fire. And and I swear to God, I I understood the man. I don't speak a lick of Russian, but I swear to God, I understood. He was my spirit animal. You just see him put the car in reverse and go, Ah, oh, fucking Tuesdays, I gotta deal with this bullshit <laughs> traffic. And then it just explodes in front of him, a giant fireball. Oh, fuck, they're going to have to uh, run clothes for days. Uh, how the fuck am I... I'm going to be late to work. My boss is going to chew my ass. Just not like... Like, this is a normal Tuesday. Just, oh, god damn it. Yeah. Flaming fireballs on the road again. Just I didn't like, know this was Thursday. Just like... Just like walk into work like, I'm sorry, there was a gas tank explosion. That's the fourth time this week. <laughs> Yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> Somebody needs to train a new driver. That was four different drivers. Ah. Uh, yeah. Need to do the better training school. I mean, just I I love that just the amount of no fucks given on on dash cams is beautiful. Again, I love it. Again, hilariously terrifying. Uh, oh man. I'm serious when I say you'd be walking through the streets. And I have any idea where you are and need directions. And you see some guy stabbing some other guy in the alleyway. And you'd walk up to him and say, hey, do you know where to get to, like, uh, the closet? Oh, well, yeah, it's, uh, you need he's, to take a left he's and, uh... He's stabbing the guy. He's still stabbing the guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just go up that way. Yeah, and for just... the record, I was making a stabbing motion when by, I was doing By the that. way, you see this knife with all the blood here? Let me draw you a map on the sidewalk. <laughs> all right, there you go. Hey, where are you going? Stab, stab, stab. Thank you. I needed to uh, n- needed I to add a few more it's points a, you, to you this map. You just don't give a shit about the guys being stabbed. You just want to know where you're going. Yeah. All right. Like, like I said, I I mean, I, I kind of get it. I mean, when you're in a Siberian winter like this, and you've been through the shit that Russians have been, what's what's to get excited about? I mean... <laughs> it honestly kind of reminds me of my time in Boston. So, <laughs> I just... What phases Russians? Um... If you, t- if you, the trains, if you stop the trains, the entire country is thrown off. Huh. Yeah. Yep. That okay. Was, that has been the one constant thing everybody always says about communism. I know Russia's not communist now, but they have a lot <laughs> of communist traditions still. But, like, they will always say, well, at least the trains are on time. It's, Didn't they used to yeah. say that about Mussolini in Italy as well? Oh, Yeah. Maybe fascism thing. has the same, like, you know, maybe it's the authority of it all. And that's the only thing that's important in Russia, is that the trains keep running. Huh. We get train loads of potatoes from Ireland to uh, Ireland. See, that's the real reason. <laughs> oh my god, so people can't go where they are? People can freeze to death? No, fuck that. We need the, we need our potatoes. We need the vodka. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if vodka supplies if- potatoes... Yeah, you so, know, for food. No, for vodka. <laughs> but <laughs> but what do you eat? Vodka. You <laughs> can't eat vodka. It's made of potatoes. It's f- food. <laughs> it's so cold in Russia, the vodka freezes, so they have to eat it. <laughs> Ooh, vodka slush. Nice. I just, oh, man. Yeah. So, so the trains run on time, and there's plenty of vodka. If any of those two things ever stop... Russia ex- implodes. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate I don't know Russian because that sounds like just paradise. Mm, yes. Vodka and good public transit. I love it. That's I love all it. I want in life. Oh, man. Just to me, though, like Lego Sears. Or Oleg Sears would be more precise. I have no idea what you just said. Oh. If. I know it's so fucking cold that we, like, we cannot grow our potatoes. And that's why like, we love Ireland so much, is that we get all the potatoes, but we can't grow that, anything. That's that's strange to me, just because that's why Ireland grows potatoes so much, just because it's a very hardy vegetable that, you know, you can grow, like, 
in really low temperatures. Not to mention, uh, I bet you guys get a lot of sweaters from them, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know if I were allied with Ireland, I'd want some of their nice sweaters. But <laughs> We have sweaters so thick that the pony is fingered none, and you'd never be able to tell. Oh, it, I can't even tell. Damn you and your, uh, and your proud ways. She's poking so hard that I can't even tell. <laughs> It's weird for people to wrap their heads around because they think Russians are so badass and they think of the Russian mafia or Russian mob that it's, it's so much worse, but in reality, that it's nothing. It's really, literally nothing. Well, yeah, like, uh, for me personally, I haven't... I, I actually don't think I've actually met any uh, Russian mobsters. I don't go out looking for them. They find you. I Yeah, I was in Jersey long enough to where, like, they ended up finding me. Uh, they were the Italian mafia, and, like, I mean, yeah, I wouldn't want to mess with them at all, but they're not, like, starting fights with people. They're not, like... You gotta keep a low profile. Yeah, they're not horrible. They're actually really decent, down to earth people. And they're the best road crew construction you can ever have. Oh my god. They run a city better than any government ever has. The, Ru- the, the Russian mafia is like, it's so lame to think about. Like, the only, the, the hierarchy there is that if a guy can grow his own potatoes, he's, the, he's now the Russian mafia. <laughs> He's now the Russian mob. <laughs> I, I would, oh, I would love please, that. Don Colleone, just... please give us our daily allotment of potatoes. <laughs> I, I would absolutely love just like two shirtless guys playing five finger fillet. It's like, boss, somebody needs to see him. Uh, who is it? Uh, some farmer. I don't know. And just like some average looking dude walks in on these like. Jack guy is looking really crazy and tough, and he's like, I have everything you need. Just <laughs> drops a sack of potatoes. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, we may not have given you the respect needed. Uh, <laughs> I am so sorry that my associates offended you. Um, yeah. Please, take one of their hands. We should never do Russian accents, ever. <laughs> Hey, that's what we have CJ for. He's got the Russian accent. In Russia, they try not to do the accent as hard as they can. It's really weird. But, but their accent's so charming and kind of scary. I know, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it's it's both. I have a fear boner. Um, the return of the fear boner. I love it. Uh, yeah. So. All right, guys. Well, I hope... I think, I think we did a good job today. We had a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, uh... Sometimes, really, again, I think I made the joke before, it's an episode about nothing. No, I think it's an episode about Russia and CJ. Yes. It's, it's an episode about mild racism that we're just not going to really press well, too hard. We're, we're, we're going to ignore it now, just like the rest of the world, and pretend it never happened. Yeah. So, uh... It's, it, we're American. It's worked out really well for us. Right. I'm just saying, if I ever reincarnate, um, I think I'm gonna go with male and, uh, and white. Yeah, you know what? That's, uh, that's usually a good combination. I'm gonna go with white and male. I don't know, man. I mean, in the future, I'm sure it's going to be really bad. But so far, I've been on a winning streak with that. Yeah, yeah, we've been doing really good so far. A little bit of a decline isn't going to hurt us. No, no. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed having CJ back. Yeah, I enjoyed being here. And I hope I don't get canceled. <laughs> um, this is basically a volunteer broadcast. We can't be canceled. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... We don't get paid. What are they going to do? Stop? That's true. I, I don't know. What could... Th- I don't know. I we have nothing. I have plans. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, sorry. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a great day. And once again, this has been Alleyway Conversations signing off. I'm Andrew. Das Vidanya. <laughs> racist. I tried. Uh, you uh, racist bastard. But I'm Patrick. <laughs> pretty difficult stuff, so. I'll give it to you. I'll give you like a 6 out of 10. That's pretty good. I mean, good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we hope to see you next time. Do you have any potatoes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>